Our planet has been circling the sun for millions of years. On its surface, millions of animals have existed. There were many odd creatures among them, but they only had an impact on our imaginations as humans since we are the only species to have evolved with the benefit of reason. Finding it wasn't at all simple. Its origins can be traced back 20 million years to those proconsul-like fruit-eating critters that inhabited African trees. They played around in trees, far from hazards on the ground, eating fruit and leaves. They ranged in size from the marmoset to the gorilla depending on the species. The world below them didn't really interest them. Proconsuls, which resembled the contemporary macaque almost perfectly, climbed through the branches on all fours. They had identically sized upper and lower limbs. Instead than bending their fingers, they moved by leaning on open hands. In East Africa, several proconsul fossils have been discovered. The canine teeth and muzzle of these creatures were relatively modest, indicating non-aggression, one of the main characteristics that led to reason. The skull was simple, the brain was little and quite simple. However, a dip in temperature 10 million years ago made the African jungle sparse, making it hard to go from tree to tree via branches. The proconsul ancestor Ardipithecus was forced to abandon the trees and started to move on their back limbs. Although their feet were still prehensile, they had unique arches that allowed them to walk upright. These animals could walk, albeit more laboriously than we do, as evidenced by the nearly complete skeleton of an Ardipithecus dubbed Ardi. Ardipithecus had knee-length arms with hands that were a mix of human and ape. Ardipithecus didn't want to leave their usual habitat on tree crowns. As all of Ardi's traits lie somewhere between wholly ape-like and wholly human, they were in fact the transitional species between humans and apes. But everything changed. Africa became devoid of trees and transformed into an endless savanna. Gracile australopiths, brand new species that roamed the savanna four million years ago. They adapted well to their new environment since their two-legged gait was similar to ours. They collected, consumed, and were able to walk for kilometers on end. They organized into strong groups, which enabled them to ward off any threats. They were also curious. Still possessing a prominent muzzle and a retracted forehead, their cranium was still ape-like. Our features are difficult to see at first glance, but the head was kept on the upright neck, the canine teeth shrank, and the brain became larger. East African Australopithecus afarensis, which lived three million years ago, gave rise to the first humans. Our ancestors passed the 700-gram brain size Rubicon 2.5 million years ago. The earliest member of our genus, Homo habilis, or Handyman. He was given the moniker Homo habilis for a reason this species was the first to create stone tools. These prehistoric choppers, which were produced from pebbles with a few hits, were nonetheless useful tools for killing game, chopping wood, and protecting against predators. Man now had a weapon. The savannah encouraged onward motion, and life in the trees had been permanently extinguished. Perhaps those eras are where our passion for travel and discovery began. Although the world was dangerous, intelligence allowed people to overcome obstacles. The first people were safeguarded by intelligence rather than strength or aggressiveness. Homo habilis cranium is quite similar to that of Australopithecus, although its brain weighs 600 to 800 grams, or 1.5 times as much as its forerunner. The face shrunk in size. Homo orgaster, or the working man, is a new species that first emerged about 1.5 million years ago. They turned into the savanna of Africa's fear. Stone tools and spears were a novel phenomenon. Now, not even the most vicious animals were safe. Man started to hunt. In East Africa, stone tool encircled skeletons of elephants and even antelopes have been discovered. Cut markings on animal bones are observable proof of a new evolutionary stage in humans. Though the evidence is scant and inconsistent, it's possible that this occurred about the same time as humans made their first use of fire. In East Africa, there are still many fossilized remains of the earliest people. They no longer had the ape-like inheritance in the skull, but their jaws remained huge and their brains were half as big as ours. With the exception of their heads, their bodies were hardly any different from ours in terms of height and structure. They were the first to leave Africa and settled all throughout the continent. Colonization of the planet was the final step. They therefore made that decision, and new rulers ruled over the wide stretches of the earth. But not straight away. Man wasn't given a warm greeting by the planet. Nature shouldn't be taken for granted. 
life wasn't always a bed of roses. Human remains that have been damaged by predators' teeth attest to that. But struggle was what gave rise to and encouraged reason. The first ancient humans with a brain size comparable to ours were Homo heidelbergensis. Their eyes glowed with the fresh light of reason, yet their expressions were still ferocious. They constructed homes, buried their dead, and produced the first works of art, however primitive they may have been. Man has undergone a protracted and challenging process of evolution. What awaits us in the future? We become accountable to ourselves through reason. Everything now rallies on us. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel to learn more about human history.